conservation biology and environmental science have a number of underlying principles, um, uh, philosophies, ethics, um, ideas about what are the right things to do for the environment. And uh, I want to talk about these ethics, especially the ones that developed in North America, because these strongly have influenced our policy in the United States. So the objectives are to look at uh, certain key figures. We're going to look at Emerson, Thoreau, John Muir, Pinchot, and Leopold. And I suspect you've heard of a lot of these already, uh, probably from literature classes. And we're going to try to t talk about their three basic philosophical approaches to conservation, three fundamental ethics. And these are ethics that are, are central to how we use resources in the United States, but it's not exclusive. There are other approaches to conservation. And uh, this should result in being able to, to define what sustainability of a resource means and how we do that, the, the management and the stewardship we have to sustain a resource. So to start with, I want to start talking about Emerson. You've probably read Emerson. You've heard of Emerson. Emerson's famous for his writings on transcendentalism. And um, I'm not going to talk about all of what transcendentalism is, but uh, really we're talking about nature being a temple for allowing us to commune with the spiritual world. And in his essay, Nature, he says, In the presence of nature, a wild delight runs through the man in spite of real sorrows. So it's important for our spiritual values, our spiritual growth, to have natural areas set aside. And this strongly influenced the work of uh, Thoreau. And Thoreau, you might know him from writing Walden Pond, where he went to live on a pond and, and uh, tried to live a simple life, back to basics, to learn uh, what was important, what was essential, and what was going to be best for, for human um, growth. And this became the philosophical basis for what is known as the Romantic Transcendental Preservation Ethic. And I know that's a mouthful. Romantic Transcendental preservation ethic. So normally people will just shorten it and refer to it as the preservation ethic. And in his essay Walking, he says, in wildness is the preservation of the world. He says this stuff is essential. We need these natural places. We need these beautiful places to become more emotionally centered, to become healthier, to become spiritually uh, more enlightened. And it's very important for us to remember what are the basics and what's important to life. Because if you look at what was happening in the country at the time, it was starting to look like this. We were logging all of the trees. We were using them to build railways, railroad ties. Uh, we were using them to build ships, we were making charcoal, and we were just cutting down the forest as quickly as we possibly could. And I personally don't find this sort of place to be spiritually enlightening. I find it very sad and depressing. However, that guy sitting on that tree there, he looks spiritually enlightened, but uh, that's because he's probably making a lot more money off of the, the place than anybody else in, in the, that picture. Uh, those don't look particularly like the loggers. Those look like the businessmen who are making the money. And this land would have been logged and then sold to farmers who would then use the land for, for farming land. And not only were people upset that all these beautiful places were disappearing, um, but they needed some sort of uh, concerted effort to protect places. And so even though we had this romantic transcendental preservation ethic, we needed to put it into practice. And that's where John Muir comes into the picture. John Moore, Muir ran a sawmill in what ended up being an area converted to become Yosemite National Park. A beautiful area, one of our national treasures. And John Muir saw what was, was happening to the area as he was cutting down these beautiful places and turning them into boards. He realized that the money he was making was not worth it. That the aesthetic value of these places, the beauty of these places, the spiritual values, the feelings you get when you go to these places were much more important. They were much greater than any materialistic gains you could get from exploiting these places. And that nature had an intrinsic value beyond human need. There was a value to nature that could not be uh, replaced. And whether or not we were in it or not, it had a right to exist that destroying nature was destroying God's work. It was a very spiritual approach to looking at preservation. And he founded the Sierra Club, which is still an extremely active environmental organization. The, the Sierra Club is a political advocate. They're a lobbying group. They will also take companies to court if they see them destroying natural areas, or they will take the federal government to court. And so there was a very strong arm then behind this preservation ethic. 
John Muir wrote on going to the wilderness in his essay, Our National Parks, and he said, The tendency nowadays to wander in wilderness is delightful to see. Thousands of tired, over-civilized people are beginning to find out that going to the mountains is going home, that wildness is a necessity, and that mountain parks and reservations are useful, not only as fountains of timber and irrigating rivers, but as fountains of life. So some of us probably feel a little over-civilized, and sometimes there can be a value to getting away from the computer, getting away from the cell phone, getting away from your day-to-day uh, bills and your problems that you're dealing with, and realizing what's important, getting out in a natural area, listening to the birds sing, hearing the rivers babble, uh, seeing a beautiful scene, and that it's necessary for our psyche, for our uh, view of the world, and uh, making sure that we become better people this way.